Now for the details, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday hosted an iftar banquet for BDF senior officers. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuaimi, the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thiab bin Saqar Al Nuaimi, and other senior BDF officers. His Royal Highness affirmed the BDF's advanced levels of combat readiness and efficiency, attributing them to the support provided by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, which has bolstered the BDF's capacity as fulfilled to fulfill its duties effectively. He highlighted that the sacrifices and valor shown by BDF personnel will always be remembered and recognized the BDF's role alongside allies in preserving regional security and stability. On the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan, His Royal Highness exchanged best wishes with the BDF Commander-in-Chief and senior BDF officers and wished Bahrain, the Arab and Islamic nations for the security and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday also received the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Sunni Waqf, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's development, particularly its houses of worship during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, which reflects his belief in the vital role of mosques as a platform to consolidate the noble Islamic values of unity, peace, and coexistence. His Royal Highness was then presented by Al Hajri a book named Mosques of Bahrain that were built during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. It showcases the mosques built under His Majesty's era, their vital role and efforts to develop these places of worship over the years. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude for the book, noting the efforts required to document, edit and prepare its content. He highlighted the importance of continuing the implementation of the mosque's development plan throughout the year with the high standards of modern and Islamic designs, ensuring their readiness to accommodate worshippers across governorates. And for his part, Al Hajri expressed gratitude for meeting with His Royal Highness, noting Bahrain's achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. Well, since 1999, Bahrain witnessed the opening of a mosque every 36 days, with the kingdom becoming a replate with houses of worship for all. Al Hajri emphasized that more than half of the current mosques were built during the reign of His Majesty the King. He recognized His Royal Highness' unwavering support to the places of worship, highlighting His Royal Highness' recent directive to open, restore, and develop 32 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari Waqf across the governorates. He wished Bahrain further development, prosperity and safety under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday received the newly appointed Ambassador of Cyprus to Bahrain, Dr. Andres Aliadas at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of strengthening bilateral cooperation between Bahrain and Cyprus to achieve a common interest. He welcomed the ambassador and wished him success in performing his diplomatic duties. They discussed the latest regional and international developments and the ambassador expressed thanks for His Royal Highness' commitment to developing bilateral relations and wished Bahrain for the progress and development. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended this meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued several edicts. Edict 10 for 2024, appointing two directors at the General Sports Authority, GSA, based on a proposal by the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the GSA as follows. Yusuf Daij Mohammed Amar Morfi as Director of Facilities Management and Mohammed Salman Meki Habib as Director of Legal Affairs and Licensing. Edict 11, appointing two directors at the Ministry of Social Development based on a proposal by the Minister of Social Development. The following shall be appointed to the Ministry. Abdul Ilah made Abdul Rida Abdul Al as Director of Social Assistance and Ibrahim Ahmed Al Fadala as Director of Social Welfare. Edict 12, transferring and appointing directors at the Institute of Public Administration based on a proposal by the Director General of the Institute. Yusuf Abdullah Ahmed Bushiri, Director of Human and Financial Resources, shall be transferred to the Director of Business Development. The following shall be appointed at the Institute of Public Administration. Maryam Fuad Abdurrahim Kamal as Director of Human and Financial Resources and Ayman Youssef Hassan Salman as Director of Learning and Development. And His Royal Highness issued Edict 13, amending Article 1 of Edict 12 of 2019 on establishing the National Committee to Combating Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS, based on a proposal by the Minister of Health. Article 1 of Edict 12 of 2019 shall be replaced with the following. The National Committee to Combat AIDS shall be established and presided by the Minister of Health and shall comprise of the following members. Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health as Vice President and as members, the Assistant Under Secretary of Public Health at the Ministry of Health, the Director of Public Health, the Director of Health Promotion at the Ministry of Health, the Head of the Therapeutic Division at the Ministry of Interior, Director of Student Services at the Ministry of Education, Head of Awareness and Guidance at the Ministry of Labour, Director of Family Guidance at the Ministry of Social Development. Director of Television at the Ministry of Information, Director of Youth Empowerment at the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Consultant of Public Health at the Ministry of Health, the Head of the Infection Control Unit at Government Hospitals, the Chief of the Diagnosis Department at the Royal Medical Services for the Hospitals of the BDF, the Chief of Infection Prevention and Control at King Hamad University Hospital, the Chairperson of the Path Pathology Department at the Arabian Gulf University, and Infectious Diseases Consultant and Head of Infection Control at the Ministry of Health as member and also rapporteur. The National Guard Commander, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met the President of Pakistan, Asif Ali Zardari, in Islamabad. His Highness conveyed to Mr. Zardari the congratulations and greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister on his election as President and their wishes to Pakistan of further progress. The two sides discussed the development of bilateral relations and other issues, and the National Guard Commander hailed the level of cooperation and exchange change of experiences between the two sides, affirming the continuation of efforts to develop Bahraini-Pakistani ties for the interests of both countries. The President uh, commended Bahrain's development in all fields under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the cooperation and coordination in international events for the interests of the two countries and the Islamic nation. He asked the National Guard Commander to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, wishing His Highness a pleasant stay in Pakistan. 
The National Guard commander thanked the president for the warm welcome and hospitality, wishing Pakistan further prosperity. His Highness is on an official visit to Pakistan to participate in the celebrations of Pakistan Day on March 23rd at the invitation of Pakistan's Chief of Army Staff, General Asim Munia. The meeting was attended by Bahrain's ambassador to Pakistan, Mohammed Ibrahim Mohammed. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Musallam, yesterday chaired the Council's weekly session, which reviewed and approved a draft law amending some provisions of the Penal Code. The session then approved a number of proposals and referred them to the government regarding organizing pensions and retirement benefits for government employees as well as military retirement law. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, received the Secretary General of the Executive Committee of the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, Hussein Al Sheikh, and his delegation currently on a visit to Bahrain. The minister affirmed the strength of the deep rooted fraternal relations and cooperation between both countries in all fields. He emphasized Bahrain's stance in support of the Palestinian cause and the rights of the Palestinian people, including their right to establish their independent state on the June 4, 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital, according to the two-state solution and the relevant international legitimacy resolutions. He reiterated Bahrain's support for the Palestinian National Authority and the PLO being the sole and legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Al Sheikh expressed pleasure with visiting Bahrain, hailing its supportive stances towards the rights of the Palestinian people and citing its constant support for the Palestinian cause at various international gatherings and on all occasions. He also praised Bahrain's unwavering efforts to establish peace and stability across the region, wishing the kingdom continued progress. The meeting focused on the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories, including the war in the Gaza Strip and its tragic repercussions on its civilians. They discussed regional and international efforts to reach a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, provide protection for the local residents and release hostages, as well as open safe corridors to deliver humanitarian aid to civilians to alleviate their suffering. They stressed the importance of more efforts and coordination to immediately stop the war in Gaza to protect civilians and avoid its negative effects on regional security and stability. They also underlined the need to carry on efforts to revive the peace process to reach just and lasting peace in the Middle East, in addition to establishing a Palestinian state in accordance with the two-state solution and the Arab Peace Initiative, as well as accepting its membership in the UN as an independent, fully sovereign state. The governments of Bahrain and Singapore signed a treaty to establish the Bahrain International Commercial Court in Bahrain and a designated body in Singapore. The treaty was signed by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, Nawaf al Mu'awda, and the Singaporean Minister for Home Affairs and Law, Kasi Viz Wanathan Shang Mugan, during a virtual meeting. The treaty aims to promote the international rule of law and boost international trade by developing systems for the resolution of disputes in international trade and endorsing a transnational system of commercial justice. Both countries have negotiated a treaty finding a balance between party autonomy and public policy, providing opt-in and opt-out models for the commercial court and the appeal mechanism, while the reinsurance or issuance of decisions allows for safeguarding notions of public policy. The cooperation between the two international commercial courts will allow for the development of better standards for international commercial dispute resolution, which will address the challenges users face to resolve their disputes. And to understand more about this treaty, we now join the judge of the Court of Cassation of Bahrain, Mr. Jean Paulson, by phone. Hello, Mr. Paulson. Can you tell us uh, more about the importance of this treaty signed today between Bahrain and Singapore? I'd be pleased to do so. Until now, there has been only one international commercial court in the world, in Singapore. It was created there more than 10 years ago. By international court, 
we mean that the judges are highly qualified judges selected from various countries around the world. That means that the court is absolutely neutral, which is important if commercial businesses are to be sure that any dispute will be decided without favoring one side or the other. Now, Bahrain has created the second international commercial court in the world, the Bahrain International Commercial Court, BIPC. The International Commercial Court in Bahrain will also decide disputes that the parties have agreed in advance should be decided by that court. If those parties also decide in advance that they want to have the possibility of later bringing an appeal to a designated body of the Singapore International Court, they may do so, but they do not have to. As long as the BICC is established with the same standards as the SICC, they would not have any reason to continue the case as it would just increase the cost. And uh, that was the judge of the Court of Cassation of Bahrain, Mr. Jean Paulson. Thank you very much for joining us. A press conference was held uh, by the Information and E-Government Authority to provide a summary of the achievements of the Electronic Transformation Program for the year 2023. IGA Chief Executive Mohamed al qaid affirmed that employing advanced technologies in government digital initiatives and projects contributed to increasing productivity and government performance in light of an innovative and stimulating work environment for providing government services. He said the authority worked to continue in implementing electronic transformation projects for all government services and developing the user experience based on its commitment to the decisions of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology and in cooperation with all government agencies. The press conference reviewed the services that were improved and the ones that were transformed from traditional to electronic. The prosperous era of His Majesty the King witnessed significant achievements in the building and construction of mosques and places of worship, as well as the restoration and development of a large number of them. A mosque was built every 36 days since 1999 until now across all governorates, thanks to the care and support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister. The Sunni and Jafari Waqf directorates received government support over the years, which contributed to strengthening Islamic values, social cohesion, and the principles of unity and peace. And Bahrain's embassy to the U.S. held an annual Iftar banquet at the Middle East Institute in the presence of officials, ambassadors and guests from civil society organizations of various religions and cultures. Bahrain's ambassador to the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, affirmed Bahrain's commitment to promoting the values of religious tolerance and peaceful coexistence in line with His Majesty the King's vision and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister. He noted that the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration establishes and calls for the dissemination of the values of coexistence, peace and religious freedom. The ambassador stressed the importance of continuing humanitarian efforts and stopping the war in Gaza and called for reaching diplomatic solutions to regional conflicts and providing opportunities for security and development for all peoples.